What's up everybody? It's Ryan from Performable. And we're out here in the garage doing a little brake job on this old shitbox Chevy. It's Evans, Colorado here with an ADL 90 in it. Um, for some reason, the word brake reminded me of uh, like transmission pumps and stuff. So, throwing back to a little Tech Tip Tuesday. That's what I want to talk about today. And we're going to get a little more advanced. The 6L80 bell housing day. Out of a core. She's pretty healthy. It's nice. Um, this is that stupid design I hate so much. And um, I just want to show you guys a little bit, just a brief overview on kind of what's going on here. How this actually does its job. So, we have a rotor, slide, guide ring, and a bunch of vanes on your rotor. Okay? And this little thing is your rotor. It goes on to the uh, torque converter. This piece breaks easy. Okay. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about a little fluid flow and then just a little fun fact that I learned that I thought was really cool and it pertains to the 4L60. Uh, this would pertain to the 700 and the 204R as well. Any transmission that uses this vein uh, type pump, you know, whether it be 13, 7, 10, doesn't matter. What we have here is, you know, this direction, if you're looking at it, and this is the top of the bell housing up here so in this direction this is flow okay this is suction is what we call it and it's going to suck the fluid and, and shoot it out and make pressure all right Evan was making entirely too much noise so we're gonna talk about this right over here all right so the last thing we talked about suction you go this way and the issue with this, uh, this whole 6L um, 8090, which I've taught you guys that pretty much everything you need to know about the 4L60, I'm still doing some stuff with it. Um, we'll still talk about the 80, but this, this got my interest. So the issue, biggest issue among several other issues is converter clutch, which fries, sends debris through the pump, tears up your new bell housing and your pump backing and just causes a lot of problems. Um, a big part of that, like I always preach is tuning, turn that active fuel management off, you know, get a good converter. Uh, the stock ones are not adequate, they just aren't. And that's namely due to the stator. Uh, cast aluminum ones are not good, get a furnace braze one. We'll talk more about that in the future. However, when we're sucking this way, our slide is pivoting with what we're doing in the vehicle, which is being controlled by this channel here. Not many people know this whole thing up to this pivot pin is a channel. Same with the 60, 700. This is where your pressure regulator feeds in. Okay. And what that's going to do is increase the output or reduce the output, which we just call decrease or increase. So this is decrease. This is increase. Increase, our suction is this way. It's at maximum. Decrease. You notice all these veins are equalized. Okay, and we're pushing against the spring. Not as much suction, it's not compressing. I like to think of this as like a turbocharger. When we go wide open throttle, look at how much we can compress that fluid and how much suction this area, okay? So it's, it's really pulling in some fluid and compressing it tight to build PSI. And it's working with this pressure regulator. So when the transmission overall is satisfied with its pressure, the pressure regulator will allow some fluid to come in, push against this right here, the rubber, the wiper, and this little land, idle watt, and we'll fluctuate like that. So we basically change the expansion and compression by altering the fluid flow itself in a transmission, and the job of the PR valve, pressure regulator valve, is to let that fluid pass and do its job. Um, one thing everyone should be aware of with this, whether you're machining or not, is be aware of your depths, okay? We're talking a one to two thousandths difference on these pieces, and that is all you are allowed. It is that tight of a fit, because remember, this is a hydraulic pump, and the fundamental rule of hydraulics and transmissions is all you're doing is controlling a massive leak. That is, that is it. Fun little fact that I wanted to share that I talked about in the beginning is you notice the position of these veins and right now they're, they're primarily equalized. However, this whole thing's offset. When we're watt, 
especially, you can really see it. You'll notice this one's slightly more in than this one, and vice versa, okay? The reason that is, I learned, is to prevent fluid harmonics at a certain RPM, which could cause, you know, a vibration, because fluid, this whole thing's very noisy. We have a lot of stuff moving, going on, making contact, and hydraulic oil itself is noisy. So, fun little fact, these are spaced almost randomly at different points, if you look very close, and uh, that's to prevent excessive harmonics. So, we all learned something new today. So if you guys know more than I do right now, which is probably a lot of you about this, teach me, and I will teach you and others. This is my focus this year. Stay tuned.